No. Um. Oh no. You dropped your pen. Oh no. It fell out of your fake hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> we'll edit that out of the audio side. Video or keep that all. <laughs> Did you get your pen? I got my, I got my pen. Um. That, you tipped over very easily. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I can't wait to watch that back. <laughs> so, tell me something terrible. Hi, I'm Tiffany. What? <laughs> no, not yet. I mean, we usually say hi to you. Hi to YouTube. Hi, YouTube. Hello, all of you. All eight of you watching regularly. <laughs> hey. Used to be seven, now it's eight. That's why we're here again. Tiff had to do her hair. Thanks, eight subscriber. Just kidding. No, I did my hair <clears throat> earlier. It, she just needed brushed. So, same rules apply. We yep. have eight subscribers. If we get to nine, we'll do this again. Yes. <laughs> or we'll wait until we get to nine, and then we'll do another one of these. Motivation. You gotta have a reward, right? What yes. is that? Incentivizing. Positive, yeah, positive reinforcement. Or negative. We'll take all the videos out if we don't get a nine subscriber. Is that how that works? I think that's negative punishment. Whatever. I don't remember. I don't know either. Doesn't matter. Don't have kids, guys. I'm just kidding. Is that positive? So great. Does that <laughs> have to do with positive reinforcement or negative? Sorry, I just. And negative it punishment? Yeah, that has a lot to do with it. Why's your screwdriver here? For my mic when it goes limp. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That that one stays in the house. Okay. It just felt extremely random. Nope, it's not. There's a random <laughs> I don't know if it's a weapon or um and there's electrical tape wrapped around it, which is that I don't know why. That's your doing. <laughs> not my doing. Are you sure? Yes. I don't know where that screwdriver <laughs> came from then. Cool. Okay. It's a murder weapon. Probably. That we just found. Well it's kinda like that box you wanted to buy, like three dollar junk that had like a rogue kitchen knife in it. That's normal. No. <laughs> no. I still want that box of junk. Well. I wanted. They're up the The road. garage sale has passed. Oh, darn. We are about as Midwestern as you can get. All right. Are you ready to get started for Who the... Who doesn't love a garage sale? Sure. I don't know. Say your thing. Hi, I'm Tiffany. Hi, I'm Scott. And, and I was trying not to cough there. <laughs> <laughs> and you're listening to tell me something terrible. Yeah, you are. Well, Scott tries not to die. Just would have been a really fun way to start the episode with you saying hi in your name. And then me coughing profusely. Are you okay over there? You got a f fuzz? Lots of fuzzes. All the f all the mouth fuzzes? Yep. Okay. I don't know what you did to my mic, but apparently there's fuzzes on it. I thought you were going to say, I don't know what you did to my mouth. And I was like, <laughs> not put fuzzies in it. Because that's weird. <laughs> yeah. Oh, could you imagine like cotton, like, uh, like when you go to the dentist and they shove like the cotton rounds oh, in your mouth. Oh, you have to bite on it? Yeah. Arr. Ugh. Is that a fun thought? Nope. Uh, no? Mm -mm, it's awful. Is this, is this not the ASMR podcast you were hoping for? Mm -mm. Okay. Um, so now that we started with that horrible, like, not visual feeling. Sensation. Mm -hmm. um, shall we delve into the actual topic then? Sure. Okay. So is that I don't know what it's about, but I know it's long. It's not that long. So it's episode 39, right? It's always that long. What? Is it 39? Yes. Sure. Do you remember back when we did the execution one? The Michigan one? Mm hmm Yeah. And that wasn't that long no, ago. No, it wasn't the Michigan one. It was the all, like, the United States Yeah, but as a whole. you did, part of it was on Michigan, right? Well, no, because we, we, I just mentioned that we were the last ones to, Adopted the first that. ones okay. to get rid of. Um, yeah, the execution one was like, <laughs> or there's the yawn, uh, no cough, um, like six or seven episodes ago. Yeah, and you're all like, oh, we'll do this, we'll do this box execution on like episode 39 or something boxed botched no you said boxed. I totally said boxed the this boxed education <laughs> good the box education um <laughs> we should really do a podcast we're so good with words we are um professional speakers so i thought that i would do this whole episode as a callback because you were like ah, maybe we'll do that for episode 39 well it's episode 39 and we're gonna do the last botched hanging public oh. hanging That's in the united states is this the one you briefly mentioned? You've looked it up. Did I? Yeah, you were very Google heavy that episode. Oh, I do that a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I'll try not to do that this episode. Then you seem to uh, not appreciate it. 
No, I do appreciate it because that's how we got this topic. So today... Uh, on Boxed ex- Executions? On Botched Executions. No, we are going to title this one probably Boxed Executions. <laughs> no? No. <laughs> um. So I thought that we would do the last public hanging. Public hanging in the United States. Well, Were there a lot of private hangings going on? There are. L- like lynches or no. like... Okay. <laughs> I mean, yes, but like... <laughs> Also, we'll get to it. Okay. So, you would look it up. So, Rainy, Berthia, Bethia, Berthia. Where, where, let me see. Let me see. Where is it at? Right there. Berthia. Okay. <laughs> Rainy was born. She takes it as, as gospel. What do they call that? Takes it as Word? truth. Sure. Whatever. Um. So, Rainy was born in about 1909 in Virginia, and he became an orphan when his First, his mom died in 1919, and his father died in 1926. So he made his way to Kentucky from Virginia, where he got his first job working for the Rutherford family and living in their basement for about a year. Next, he upgraded to... What was he doing for that family? He's just like a handyman, like a hand, like around the house. Like he would fix things and work around the house and clean and stuff. Okay. Okay. So next, he upgraded to living in a cabin behind the house of Emmett Wells, and then onward, he went to rent a room and became a laborer for Miss Charles Brown. Miss Charles? Yeah, Miss Charles. It's not really important. Emmett Wells is, though. Can we, her name's Charlie Brown, then. I mean, I'm sure that was her husband's name. This is, like, the early 1900s. Women weren't allowed to have names. Oh, so this was the wife of Charlie Brown. Yeah. What was or the name? widow of Charlie Brown. What was her name? Miss Charles Brown. No, no, his love interest, Charlie Brown's. Lucy? Yes. Yeah. I'm like, Peppermint Pandy? No, Peppermint Patty was no, into... No, no, you said Peppermint <laughs> Pandy. What's pepper, Peppermint Pandy? Guys, I only had two drinks tonight, too. I'm just... I want to know who Peppermint Pandy is. And <laughs> Peppermint? Oh, God. Okay. Just pr- push forward. We're going to start all over again. Push forward. Um, no going back. We've nope. never restarted a single podcast. We're not starting now. Nope. So, in 1935, Rainey was charged with his first crime, which was a breach of peace. I don't know... What the a fuck? breach of peace. That's what they charged him with. A breach of pe- a breach. Of, oh my lord, <laughs> this is going well, guys. A breach of peace. A breach of peace. Next time I it, fart, I'm gonna call it a breach of peace. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like he was black, and it was the 1900s. So who knows what the hell yeah, that he was? Just spoke out of turn, uh, probably. Um. So, and then in April, he was caught stealing two purses from a local beauty sh- shop, and he was. Uh, slapped with a felony for uh, grand larceny and sentenced to a year in Kentucky jail. So he managed to get paroled after six months and went back to work as a laborer, making $7 a week in 1935's money, which in today's money is $138 a week. So So, not much. No, like three and a half bucks an hour. Yeah. Um, so he was caught again for housebreaking, but he was charged, but the charge was lowered to just drunk and disorderly in public. 352 an hour. Sorry, I'm still hung up on it. Anyway, proceed. What? You know how my brain works. <laughs> Asking me to do math. Um, I was 130th. I was 140. Anyway. Um, so since he couldn't pay his fine he spent another short stint in jail until April of 1936. So this kind of... S- is like his back bit was their mom. <laughs> There's a bug. I don't know. It's like a net. No, it's small. Anyway. A gnat? <laughs> yes. Um, a G gnat. Are they OG gnats? They're phonetically spelled, yes. <laughs> so this kind of brings up us up to the night of the crime. So in on the June crime 7th. The led to his. Hanging. His hanging. Yep. So June 7th, 1936, this was the night the crime in question takes place. So early morning, Rainey broke into the room of Licia Edwards, who was a 70-year-old rich widow. Seven, seven D. Seven zero, seven D. Okay. Yep. Um, so Rainey had climbed up the roof of an outbuilding next door. <laughs> he didn't climb up the roof. He climbed to he, the roof. Onto. Right? I even wrote that. I wrote it properly. <laughs> I wrote, I wrote, roof Rainey had climbed up in an onto... <laughs> So he climbed up onto the roof of an <laughs> outbuilding next door. Then okay. he jumped onto the servants' quarters of Emmett Wells. Parkour. Was, parkour. Yes, parkour onto another roof of Emmett Wells' servants. 
Okay. Um, and then over the kitchen roof of Wells' house, and then into Licia's bedroom window. He's like friggin' Spider Man. Pretty much. Okay. So he did all of this. He then crawled through the window of <laughs> Licia's house. <laughs> well, room because it's not really her house. She was mm-hmm. renting. Um, Rainy. She's a rich widow. Why is she renting? Because she's a widow. Women weren't allowed to like own anything back in the 1930s. She's rich. I don't know what she's allowed to Still do. Still not allowed to own anything. Okay. You're barely allowed to vote. <laughs> also, have you heard of the wasps? No. The Should women's pilot division? No. Oh. Should look it up sometime. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Is it going to wreck my whole world? I'm going to be devastated or I'm going to be empowered? No, they're awesome. It, 36 of them died in service, but like... That's sad. Yeah, but... And then... Obama signed a law to like give them all the gold medal like in 2010 and even though they existed in the 1930s. Anyway, of course, you should look up sometime. I should. The Women Armed Service Pilots. I think that's what it stands for. Wasps. I feel like maybe vaguely you've heard it in passing. Like it's not like it's like one percent familiar. Out of the 36, 35 have been found. and One of them hasn't been identified yet. Like where her like where her crash handed landed. Her name was Tommy Thompson. Anyway, it's sorry. A great oh, name. I watched a whole expedition of Nona today at work. <laughs> of course you did. Yes. <laughs> but um, it's really fun and nobody's heard of them. And they were like an all women Air Force. That's why no one's heard of them. Yeah. But they like, they carried out missions and they all learned how to, like most men when they were trained, like they had to go through full army training, like 25,000 applied, like just over a thousand actually got accepted in the program. And of that third, sorry, I'm going on a tangent, but, um, they would all like men when they were trained would learn how to fly a plane, one plane. One and plane. that was the plane that they would fly over and over again. Right. And the women were trained to fly every plane. So like they were interviewing one when she was like 97. This was like a couple of years ago. And she knew how to, she like in her time flew almost tw- like 19 or something planes in the army. And right. But women are incapable of doing anything. Right. They weren't even, they were never, they weren't given veteran benefits until the seventies. Cool. Anyway. Cool. 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 So that's, that's your little terrible ticket. I never know anything, so I just wanted to say something I knew today. No, I appreciated it. That <laughs> Thank was you. fascinating. It was very off topic. No. Um. Oh, no. You dropped your pen. Oh, no. I fell out of your fake hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we'll edit that out of the audio side. Video, we're keeping that all. <laughs> Did you get your pen? I got my I got my pen. Um. That, you tipped over very easily. <laughs> okay. I can't wait to watch that back. Because <laughs> I was like, I'm fine. No, I'm not. <laughs> in my defense, our house sags really heavily. Oh my God. No, it's not that wheels. heavily. Not that heavily. <laughs> and this chair is on wheels. <laughs> not that heavily. Are you okay over there? <laughs> fine we're fine are we everything's fine i lost my spot i dropped my pen i fell on the <laughs> floor and you're not gonna edit it out not in the video oh my god that's how the video is gonna start <laughs> <laughs> okay anyway whenever you're ready to proceed guys it's not because i'm drunk it's because i'm klutzy i promise <laughs> ask my friends they'll defend me um i barely moved the chair and you just <laughs> <laughs> on that note <laughs> Rainy crawled into Licia's window. He proceeded to choke her and then rape her. Okay, way to bring it right back down. <laughs> I'm really good at that. Um, so, okay, he went from like disturbing the peace pretty much to stealing a couple purses. Mm-hmm. What led to? Th- it's a. Do you have more backstory or? Is- okay, we'll get to it. Okay. Because so that just seems like a quick he escalation. Robbed her. So he 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 meant he broke in with the intent to steal jewelry. Okay. And then she woke up when he wait. She was seventy. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. This is a bold move, Rainy. Yes. So he broke in with the intent to rob her. She woke up as he was breaking in. He choked her and then raped. He choked her to death and then raped her. That's not good. We'll get to it. Um, this is where the part where you told me something terrible. Yep. And so then he stole the jewelry that he had originally intended to steal. And then mm-hmm. for some reason, he left behind this cheap cell- uh, celluloid ring that he had gotten from the Kentucky State Penitentiary that had his number on it. Huh? Yeah. That's Makes weird. sense, right? 
It's weird. Um, so he escaped out of the window and then stashed the jewelry in a nearby barn. Later that morning, the Smith family, Licia's landlords that lived below her, noticed that uh, they didn't hear any movement from her upstairs. So thinking that she'd fallen because she's 70 years old in the 1930s, which in today's monies is like 150. Um, <laughs> today's monies? Age. In today's age is nope. like 150. No, nope, it's inflation. Just like, yeah, you mm-hmm. can calculate that backwards. Yep. Um, so they went to go investigate. And they found that the door was locked. So they contacted another neighbor who also failed to unlock the door. So Mr. Smith decided to get a ladder and climb up through her window. He couldn't to parkour check on her. by climbing up her roof. No. Um, he's probably an old white man, and we know old white men can't really do anything. Whoa. Except for fly one plane. Whoa. Whoa. Someone who eventually would be an old white man? I will tip you out of that chair again. <laughs> Please do not. <laughs> <laughs> um,. I probably can't offend him too much, guys. He cooks me dinner. Um, so so they decided to climb up into the window to check on her, and uh-huh. that's when uh, Mr. Smith had found her dead. So the Mrs. Smiths, the Smiths, and the neighbor contacted the local doctor, who then contacted the coroner, whose name was Delbert Glenn, and then the police. So when the officers arrived, uh, they made note that the room was tidy, save for muddy footprints everywhere. Glenn, the coroner, found Rainey's celluloid prison ring. Okay. That got left I behind. still don't know what celluloid means. It's like plastic. It's like a... So why don't you say plastic? Because they described it as celluloid, and I wanted to get the facts straight. <laughs> okay. 1930s plastic, not today's plastic. Different. But still... Still the same. Plastic. <laughs> so, by that Sunday afternoon, the police were already sus of Rainey Berthia after interviewing several townspeople that had stated that they had previously seen Rainey wearing the prison ring that they'd found in Licia's room. And since he already had a criminal record and they already had his fingerprints on file, th- this way the police could run the prints against prints that could be found on the items in the room, mm-hmm. proving that he had touched objects in Licia's room. And so the search for Rainey began. Also, fingerprinting was like new technology back yeah. in the 1930s. Well, um, and they could probably compare his shoes to the muddy footprints that were apparently everywhere yeah but i feel like tons of people wear like size 10 and a half shoe like i feel like shoes are not a good indicator in footprints how do you know you wore size 10 and a half i'm just saying you just named my shoe size yes (laughs) okay it's because it's a normal shoe size so they wound up finding him um he managed to capture a Stop. He managed to elude capture for four days until some guy spotted him on the banks of the Ohio River. And that man and his supervisors called the police. Rainey managed to make it to a nearby grocery store before the police found him. And then he lied about his name, but it was later confirmed that that he really was Rainey by the scar that was on the left side of his head. So Rainey was then transferred to a county jail in Louisville, Kentucky, and this was when um, he made his first confession and lamented the fact that he'd left his prison ring in Licia's room for the police to find. Because he wanted to get caught? No, he's just mad because he left it behind. He says he was upset because he left his ring behind. Like, that was, like, the thing he regretted the most. Okay. hmm And so he was incarcerated where then, and at that point he had made his second confession to a notary public and a reporter. Okay. Okay. Um, and then on June twelfth, he made his third confession to his guards, telling them that where he had stashed the jewelry that he'd stolen in the barn. So he'd stashed them in the barn. He told his guards. Okay, so he's just telling everybody that'll listen what he did. Yes, and so the barn was searched and the jewelry was found. Because Kentucky law had two different forms of execution depending on the crime you committed, the judge decided to sentence Rainey with only the crime of rape. Um, which came along with a hanging sentence instead of convicting him both of rape and murder, which would have just carried, like, the murder carries an electric chair death sentence. So just to reduce how difficult this case would be, like, Mm -hmm. fighting over how he would die, they just decided to convict him of rape. Do you ever wonder if the punishment for rape was still hanging, what the rape rate might be? It doesn't matter. They've already done studies showing that capital punishment has no effect on capital crimes like that. Really? Okay. Yes. I was just curious. Yeah. Nope. It it literally doesn't. Don't get me started. It doesn't matter. Um. <laughs> I just can't imagine if hanging was still a thing. 
Like if they like, no, I meant like, can you imagine like driving through like our downtown by the courthouse and seeing a dude hanging? Like no, if that public would, hanging is not a thing. I know, but can you imagine if it was? Public hanging is not a thing. Okay, are you yeah. still going to tell me there's private hangings? There going? is. Remember we talked about that. Uh, there's still two other states. Do you realize we drink most episodes? We'll I don't get remember. to it. Okay, you keep talking. I'm going to grab some chips. Um, I'm listening. Okay. <laughs> um, so... They weren't so on no, they weren't on June twenty second. The grand jury at his at Rainey's trial, after one hour and forty minutes of deliberation, charged Rainey with the crime. On June twenty fifth, Rainey was returned to the Owensboro jail, where the crime had occurred, to await trial there. So Rainey insisted on finding witnesses that could provide him an alibi. He wanted to bring in these like men. There's like Cl- Clyde Maddox. Um, to provide the alibi, Lad Mormon. Alibi Mormon. for what? He already confessed to everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. He totally confessed to everything. Is this going to be a thing where he was falsely accused? No, maybe. And um, the ring was planted? Uh, they don't have proof that the ring was planted, but there's definitely... We'll get to it. Oh, my God. Um, so, Willie Johnson, his rob... Which- Wait, what? <laughs> Willie Johnson? <laughs> Just go by... What's- like- What's wrong with Willie Johnson? Nothing. (laughs) I love a double dick metaphor. (laughs) So Willie was allegedly... Favorite NASCAR driver of all time is Dick Trickle. No idea what he does. I just know his name was Dick Trickle. No. Are you serious? Yes. I'm sorry. Okay, I don't shit about NASCAR. Neither do I. Except for the one white dude that was stuck in the Peanuts outfit that we'd have to get the cardboard cut out. The Peanuts out? Yeah, the... the Peanut M&M outfit? Yes, the Peanut M&M. Kyle Bush? or what? I think it was Kyle. Maybe it was Kurt Bush. I don't remember which Bush it was. I'm pretty sure it was Kyle. They're named the Bush Brothers. Oh, yeah? They're Brothers Bush. Um, (laughs) No, that's all I remember. Like, I used to play video games with Jamie, Jamie, who listens. Yeah, like NASCAR video games. Of course. And I would watch... Like, because we live, we literally live four miles from MIS, Michigan's NASCAR track. But, like, Dick Trickle is the greatest name, maybe in all of professional sports. As someone whose maiden name was Tingly, I feel really bad for that guy. Yeah. I mean, he could have gone by Richard Trickle, but still. Not, it doesn't matter. No. That was mean. His parents had to have known. Like, you have to know. What, that you're going to be Dick Trickle forever? Yes. That's so cruel. Did they hate their child? I don't know. Ugh. Um, so anyway, Willie Johnson was allegedly his robbery accomplice, according to Rainey. I wish I could say some of the fun names I see at work, but that's probably like a HIPAA violation. Oh, for sure. <laughs> but they're, I work, where I work, we get blood work in from prison, so we see like the greatest names ever. Yeah. And I can't share them with anyone because it's just secret knowledge now. yeah it's just like funny and passing now it's like there was somebody whose first name was spelled this is just a first name so it's not gonna matter their first name was tiffany and it was spelled t-y-p-h-p-h-y-n-n-y perfect yep nailed it yeah so why use any letter but why exactly why is a good letter it is the 25th letter of the alphabet that's all i can tell you it is sometimes a vowel and sometimes a consonant Look at you go. Yep. I studied English for a year, guys. And the first letter of Yanni. <laughs> All right. I was just, I thought we were naming dumb facts the letter Y. Yep. Um. So, and then there was this other guy that they couldn't find for his witnesses. So the night before the trial, Rainey confessed again and told his lawyers that he was going to plead guilty. So there was the, like the fourth confession, um, which Rainey wound up pleading guilty at the beginning of his trial the next day. So the prosecution still presented their case and their witnesses, even though Rainey pleaded guilty, pled guilty. No, he pleaded. He pleaded guilty. Okay. So I'm very confused as this case still. Uh Uh-huh. There were 21 witnesses. Okay. For the prosecution. Blackjack. Not a single witness for the defense. Seems a little lopsided. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and so the defense did nothing. This they, was the 30s? This was the 30s. Okay. A black man in the 30s being represented by white men. 
Say what? Uh Uh-huh. And so the defense did nothing. They didn't bring forward any of the witnesses that Rainey had asked for. They didn't provide any alibi. They just were like, he's going to plead guilty. And the prosecution, for some reason, presented their case with their 21 um, witnesses. Witney. Yep. And then the defense didn't even question any of the prosecutor's witnesses. So they just sat by? Yeah. And just let everything happen. Yeah. Um, so Rainey was, of course, found guilty and sentenced to death by hanging by the jury in four and a half minutes. Wow. Mm-hmm. I bet you it was a nice, diverse jury, too. I'm sure. A bunch S- of people in J.C. Penny suits. <laughs> what? Weren't they I think around it would be in like 30s? Sears and Robux back then. How long has J.C. Penny been around for? I don't know. Google it. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> You're socially obligated this now, too. This is the too. worst part of every episode. So um, once Rainey was transferred back to the state jail in Louisville, he started the appeal process. So his lawyers were fired, and Rainey hired a team of all-black lawyers who worked pro bono to appeal his case. They filed a motion for a new trial. It was denied because the motion had to be submitted by July 4th, and that motion had been submitted on July 10th. J.C. Penny, how, what year do you think they, were, they opened? Or found where they were the year they were founded. Nineteen fifty six. Wow. Nineteen oh two for the folks at home. When was Sears and Robux found? Um, Sears was eighteen ninety three. So I know they've been. I don't know the fuck ever. Robux is. It used to be Sears and Robux. Macy's is eighteen fifty eight. Wow. Target, 1902, the same year. What? What? Guys, Target's been around for 119 years. Old Navy, 94. Did you... You didn't even appreciate that math. Please, dear God, tell me I got that right. 100 what? 19. Yeah. Look at me go. 2 plus 21, or 21 minus 2. <laughs> I can do basic math, guys. Um. Yeah, if I told you TJ Maxx was 1976, you probably can't work backwards from that. 45 years? No. You're yeah. right. Was that a cat? He's locked in our room. Oh my! This every freaking it's episode. Gone off the rails. Good. Okay. So anyway, I'm actually gonna have to edit this audio podcast. That's um, the worst part of doing the visual. I know. Um. So they filed for the motion for the new trial. It was denied because the motion had to be submitted by July 4th and they had got it submitted by July 10th. 4th of July. So, yep. And then the That's lawyers called July 4th. Then the lawyers tried appealing through the Kentucky State of Do Appeals. You want to say something? You want to say no? No. He's just going to send it. The bird on the other hand. All right. Anyway, anyway. proceed. <laughs> we have too many ant- No, you can't. Um, So the lawyers tried appealing through the Kentucky State of Appeals. It was denied on the grounds of an incomplete court record. Court of Appeals? That's bananas. That was bad. (laughs) (laughs) So they said that there was an incomplete court record. That's my only Court of Appeals joke. (laughs) (laughs) You kept that in your back pocket? just. (laughs) No, I just came up with it. So they had stated that the report only held the judge's ruling and not the jury's. And then they moved on to a writ of habeas corpus, which I meant to look up the actual definition of because this is like the third time I've mentioned writ of habeas corpus and I have actually no clue what the fuck it means. Habeas corpus. Yeah. Means dead Hebrews. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. That is too soon. Too soon to what? When Hebrews died. Okay, I'll look up. What is it? Rid of habeas corpus. You said that so count. <laughs> I don't know how to. Okay. Writ. W R I T of habeas is H A B. Hold on. What is the meaning? Fundamental. Blah, blah. In Latin, it means show me the body. It's a fundamental right in the Constitution that protects against unlawful and indefinite imprisonment. Okay. Safeguard the, the, safeguard the no free sense. the individual freedom against arbitrary executive power. Okay, that makes sense. It means show me the body, which doesn't make sense in this. Doesn't case matter if they're they Hebrew or not. I just didn't know habeas. That's all I could come up with. Yeah, I, had no idea. I think habeas is body. No corpus would be dead body, <laughs> wouldn't it? Oh, I believe corpus would be body. <laughs> habeas must mean show me. 
Can you believe that we're educated human beings? Habeas De Niro. Show me the money. No. Um, so they... This has gone off the rails. It has. So they've it's moved on. A, it's arguably been the longest weekend, second longest weekend of like my life. So... What was the first? Don't answer that. I don't want to <laughs> know, actually. I no, don't want to know. Um, so the writ of habeas corpus... Half full. Oh, perfect. Well, sh- sharing is caring. What's mine is yours and what's yours is mine? <sighs> When I wrote my vows, I don't think it included sharing each other's alcohol. It should have. <laughs> <laughs> In front of your family? That would have been scandalous. So, um, <laughs> they hey. moved on to the writ of habeas corpus with the U.S. District Court. Show me the body. Rainey went before the court on August 5th, claiming that he had pled guilty unwillingly. If I could edit video, I would have the Jerry Maguire show me the money, but it would be show me the body. I'll try and edit that. It won't work. No. Um, also, we're putting this one on YouTube again, in case you're curious as to why we're complaining about the video medium. We are. Um, for all you audio people. So, Rainey went before the court on August 5th, claiming that he had pled guilty unwillingly. His witnesses were never allowed to be brought forward at trial. His initial wa- lawyers forced him to plead guilty, and that his five confessions were made under duress, and one confession he'd signed not knowing that what the document he was signing was for. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the state brought forward witnesses to deny all of these claims, and the writ of ho- habeas corpus was also denied. So, Rainey was going to be hanged no matter what. Yeah. Yep. He was just screwed by the system. Yeah. Maybe. We don't know. Because there's not really proof, like, either way. Okay. It's just a lot of like, unfortunate Even if he was guilty, he was never going to have a chance to prove otherwise. Exactly. Okay. Pause for the cause. Um, And then it got out that the person doing the hanging would be the new Davies County Sheriff, Florence Shoemaker Thompson. Who was the widowed wife of the former sheriff. Okay. So it's a female. Yeah. Yep. Because back in the good old days, the succession of sheriff, instead of just voting in a new one, um, went to the wife if the sheriff died through the widow's succession. So Sheriff Flo was in town. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For a week or is she there all month? <laughs> Sorry, that's a terrible period joke. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, Can I fix your hair? Sure, yep. So, there we go. <laughs> So the media lost its collective shit nationwide and it became hot goss that a white woman was supposed hot to goss. hot goss that a white woman was supposed to be hanging a black man for the crime of rape. So people traveled from everywhere to watch it happen. Hotels were completely TMZ full. TMZ was there. Yes. Um what's all the what are the The Vanity Fair I think usually has a lot of really and People magazine have really good like true crime. I was thinking things. what were the ones like that are by the cash register like um, the, the National one, Enquirer. Yes, the one of Men in Black. Yes. Used. Yeah. Um, so people wound up sleeping in their cars or camped on, or they camped under the gallows that were constructed in a nearby vacant lot. Oh, goodness. Yes. Um, so the gallows belonged to this man named Phil Hanna. He was an execution consultant hired to assist in the hanging. So that morning finally rolls around. It's was August- his company called like. Hannah's hangings or Hannah's hangmen's. No. Like it's so close, the alliteration's gotta be uh, there, right? Yeah. There was never a mention he's just a he's just an execution consultation. He had seen can a you, lot can of Can you imagine botched... that can you imagine that business card? It'd be oh great. yeah, I'm, uh, executioner consultant. Yeah. Well he'd seen like a lot of botched executions and so he was like, This is really horrible and so he wanted he was smart enough to try to figure out ways to actually make it so that they die the way they're supposed to. Like, cause the knot is supposed to snap their neck, but yeah. that didn't always happen. So he was good at like measuring rope. He, and platforms I think he was involved. Yeah. And I think he was involved knots. with like 70 executions or something like that. Whatever helps yeah. you sleep at night. So that morning, August 14th, 1936, a crowd estimated between 10,000 to 20,000 people gathered to watch rainy die. That's more than they can get at a tiger's game. Yeah. So there were reporters flown in, one showing up with a mobile dark room made up in the back of a van so that um, they could process You want to see my dark photos. room in the back of my van? Yeah, not creepy at all. Mm-mm. It's a new level. Oh, you know what, though? Like, as a grown-ass adult, I'd be like, okay. Like, that's, candy's not how you're going to entice me in there. But, like, photography, for sure. 
Because it was specifically so that they could take photos, process them, and fly them back to, like, I can't remember what city it is. but The like, New York Post. Pretty much, yeah. L.A. Times. Yes, something really big. Chicago, L.A., the wherever Miami the Miami Herald. <laughs> this is all I got. The Detroit Free Press. Those are four good ones, right? The, the Chicago Tribune. Ooh, look at you go. That's all I got. Okay. New York, you, not New York Times. That was the... That's where I You started. said New York Post. Oh, whatever. Oh, drop the ball. Um. So... Uh, there were people partying. There were food vendors that were set Fucking up. Fucking Woodstock for racists. Yes, it was a hu- <laughs> it was a huge spectacle. So little did the people know, or the media know, that um, a retired police officer named Arthur Hash had offered his services free of charge as the official hangman to pull the level. Oh, the le- of flow. Yeah, because he wrote her a letter that was like, "I don't. You are a mother." You're a woman because you have a weak constitution. I don't want you to have to be the person that has to to do this. You don't you don't want to be the one who actually hangs him. So he's like, I will thanks do it to for Jimmy you. Fallon. Every time someone writes a letter, I assume it has that music. Where he's like his his thank you letters. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> dear Flo, do 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 do. do. <laughs> um, Let me do this for you. So, so she had actually expressed publicly that she was hesitant in pulling the lever. She didn't actually want to be the one that that hung rainy she so, wanted to pull the trigger yeah. yeah so he actually stepped forward i want him to die i just don't want it to be at my hand yeah so she accepted his offer and he wanted to be unanimous in the whole thing he d- unanimous Ana- Ana- anonymous Ana- he wanted to be <laughs> anonymous he didn't want a lot of people he didn't that want is the public opposite of unanimous <laughs> it is um so he didn't want people to know that he was the one that's going to be pulling did the he lever. wear a hood no it gets better he showed up in a fully white linen t- a linen suit and a Panama hat, drunk as fuck. I was really hoping you were going to say, like, a hood, like, KKK, like, outfit. Oh, no. Fully white. And I was no. like, uh-oh. No, he uh-oh. wore the white linen suit, but he changed out the hood for a Panama hat. Um, Which aren't actually from Panama. No, they're not. Because it's uh, Josh Gates' favorite <laughs> hat. And I already know I sat through that episode with you. <laughs> Um, so he Luckily, was, there's no blood spatter in a hanging, so his suit wouldn't get ruined. No. Maybe there is sometimes. I don't know. If, you, if they do Cough it wrong, blood? I would imagine. Yeah. 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 The, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. So he showed up drunk. So Rainey was then walked up to it's the- like, I'm going to have one to take the edge off, and I'm going to have seven more to make my, <laughs> myself belligerent. <laughs> so he walked up the portable gallows to jeers and boos of the 20,000 strong crowd, he removed his shoes- Boos as in boo. Not as in like whiskey. Right. Yeah. Like he brought the whiskey. They brought the booze. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so he removed his shoes, allowed himself to be bound. Wait, He's, what? Yeah. You take your shoes off when you get hung. They give you fresh. Clean oh, I socks. thought you, I thought you meant, I thought you no, meant rainy. this. Okay. Rainy. I thought you meant the white suit guy. I was like, why the fuck do you take his shoes <laughs> no, off? No, nope. Nope. Is this in like a dojo? Like, why is he taking his shoes off? (laughs) He really wants to feel grounded. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) I want to feel the gallows betwixt my toes. (laughs) So, um, Rainey removed his shoes. He was, he allowed himself to be bound. He stepped onto the X and the, and then Hannah placed the rope around his neck Mm -hmm. and positioned it behind, like, next to the left ear. Um, so... Hannah then gave the word to Hash to pull the lever, which... Hash just promptly stood there, staring, doing nothing. The drone guy? Yep. Uh, while the crowd continued to yell, let's go, hang it on him, bring him on. And then finally, a deputy reached over and pulled the lever. <laughs> so Rainey dropped to his death. Luckily, the rope managed to break his neck. So at least he died quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, so the media didn't get the story that they wanted. So it turned his attention to the crowd that had gathered for the show. So one account from the Boston Reveler... That, oh, I didn't name that one. No. Um, so it appeared under the headline, Children Picnic as Killer Pays. Quote, 200 of the 20,000 people who saw Rainy... Were children? No. Rainy Berthia, a stunned 22-year-old... I'm not going to say it. Boy, hanged at dawn here today, swarmed like carrion over the gallows while his body was still suspended through the trap. They... Uh, they booed as Father Lamons min- Lamons ministered to him. They tore off the hood of his frightened, haunted face to get souvenirs, and they yelled variously, "Boy, is it a riot!" Did you see him stick his chin out when he went up those stairs? So they literally, the first like two hundred people around the gallows mm-hmm. swarmed it, 
to pick off pieces of like clothing and like rope and hood yeah. and shit to have it for souvenirs. It's just yeah. pathetic and sad. Yep. So two years later, Kentucky, who was the last state to hang people for rape, in direct response to the savage crowd and the way that Rainey was hanged, had banned public execution. The last person hung privately in the United States, um, or sorry, in Kentucky, was John Montjoy in 1937 in December. And then the last person hung in the United States was Bill Bailey, convicted of two counts of murder in Delaware in 1996. He chose to be hanged over lethal injection. Okay. See. And then the last... That's well within our lifetime. Yes. So they don't... They banned public, like full nas- nationwide banned public executions. So Hang now on. all the executions yeah. are private. Okay. Um, and then the absolute last public execution, and this one was via lethal injection. I want you to guess who it is. We already, just talked about it. I already read it. Who is it? I can't know. That's, it's Timothy McVeigh. I, I just it looked is, down and saw the name. Yep. It is Tim McVeigh. So... What year was that? Because I don't know history. Oh my God! I don't know. Well, I don't know what year he was. Google it. No, what year? No, it, it must happened. have been after ninety six. Be like se- then, right? No, this is the last public. The last hanging that happened oh, was okay. in nineteen ninety six. Honestly, I think my Tim, search history okay. is going to be more messed up than yours. All right, Tim so Col- Columbine happened in the nineties, and they based it off of Tim McVeigh execution. So it had to be like the seventies or eighties. Oh, you can watch his execution video. Oh. Oh, mm-hmm. no, it was on C-SPAN. Uh huh. I know it was public in crowds. There were there were signs and food. June it was just like everything else. 11th, 2001. What the fuck? I'm sorry. Hmm? June 11th, 2001 at Terre Haute. I knew it was Terre Haute in Indiana. That's a facility our my work gets. Terre Haute. Hold on. Stop. I need to process this for just like one minute. Yeah, we were in middle school, yo. I thought they would have fucking executed him prior to 20 years ago. Tim McVeigh died 20 years ago? Yeah, it was executed in 2001 by the whole injection. And it's there's an hour and 21 C-SPAN video on YouTube you can watch. Because that's not messed up. I'm so, you're going to have to edit out silence. Just give me like one minute. No, no, it's good to captivate. The, we are... a. a barely edited raw podcast okay i didn't think it was that fucking soon ago if you would have fucking told me it happened in the 70s i'd have been like of course it did the 70s when did the bombing happen oh no the bombing happened in the 90s I was gonna say the- okay no columbine was based off of tim mcveigh's motives and columbine happened in what 96 nine? 99 Are you asking me right now to... Yeah, tell? Google it. I can't... Okay, the Oklahoma City bombing was in 95. Okay, I thought Oklahoma City happened sure. in the 70s or 80s. I can't type. Columbine was in 99 because it's my sister's senior year. Yeah. It was on 420. I didn't realize that either. So I just Googled it. Yep. Wow. Guys, we're processing a lot of information right now. <laughs> it's all terrible. Yeah, we're going. Normally, I'm the one that has no idea what year anyone happened, and I had more of a sense of it. Than I thought you this that time. I thought that OKC happened a lot earlier than that. No, 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 no. All right. So the, sources. You can see the footage of it and kind of timestamp in your right. brain. So that I way. thought like 70s. Yeah, like what? Shitty. No. 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 Okay. It was right around like it looks like the same as like the OJ footage. Like all that to me is the same with the white Bronco. The white Bronco. You didn't realize. <laughs> If you asked Tiff what vehicle OJ I drove, fucking, no idea. I, and she doesn't think it's like I well know known it's a inform- white Bronco. No. no, 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 now. But she didn't think it was well known information. She thought I was weird because I knew it. <laughs> she didn't realize like oh. I had to take a poll at my workplace and all of them were ashamed of me. Uh okay. While you're doing that, I'm gonna tell you sources. Uh Wicapita dot com. On this yeah, day. The OJ Simpson that happened, uh, his case was in ninety five. So it's all like the same. Like, I know that was it all looks similar. the same to me, yeah. Oh my god. I'm not okay. <laughs> um, so my sources are Wikipedia.com, on this day dot com. Not and, only in your state and said on this day. Nope, on this day. And Those then are definitely owned by the same company. For sure. And then New York Times article titled The Last Hanging, There's a Reason They Outlawed Public Executions. And then 
www.history.info. Legit source there. Was it? Yep. Sarcasm? It seemed not. It was fine enough. It reflected a lot of the same information I had already found. I had a little extra. Yeah. All right. You got a lot to edit out. This went. It started, started kind of slow, slow build. Mm-hmm. And then it took a turn. Mm-hmm. And then we got sidetracked. Mm-hmm. And then it finished with revelations. Yep. It's pretty much the Bible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, that was that was like the only way I could tie that all and together. And we'll see you all in hell when we die. Wow. Can I have some more of this? Sorry, more of my crunchy stuff. I'm going to get some gluten in here. <laughs> drink. Don't cross-contaminate my drink. I don't backwash. I'm not a five-year-old. Also, I just got condensation all over my pants. Karma. It looks like I pissed myself. Good. <laughs> like in seven. If I piss myself down here, I'm doing all right in life, though. <laughs> if you piss yourself at your knee. There's worse things, I guess. <laughs> no. Are we ready to wrap this up? Nope. Uh, we. It's only 45 minutes. Let's go another half hour. We got oh, my this. God, guys. All right. If you made it this far. Oh, congratulations. I was going to say thanks for listening or watching or however you consumed this. Above Shit show. This, yeah. This is what happens when we wait till Monday to record the Tuesday episode. Mm-hmm. Last week, we did so good. We did. This week, we, we didn't. Nope. I played video games last night. We got choppered out. Woo! Did I make you look at that? No one cares. No. Literally no one cares. No. I was watching a document, not a documentary, a what? dramatization, not a, what? Not a documentary. No, what? Doc- documentary? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> not a documentary. I was watching I a- was watching documentary, men- menary? <laughs> documentary? Um, I was watching a dr- dramatization of Dr. Death, and if you haven't listened to that podcast, I highly recommend it. It's fucked. Anyway, it had Alec Baldwin in it. I was like, this is trash. I'm no, going to it bed. wasn't. It was really good. But it still had Alec Baldwin in it. Anyway, thanks for listening, watching, however you consumed. Are you good? Yep. Okay, you look like you were pondering again. No. You realize the 90s. I'm processing The not 90s pondering. were 30 years ago. I'm, hmm. <laughs> All right. We're going to go, uh, go buy some um, grave plots and headstones. Have a midlife crisis. And, yeah. <laughs> and have a good night's sleep. <laughs> uh bye Oof that was terrible